Oh, oh, we did it. We got enough wheel spin. I can't believe that actually worked. Oh my God, it's climbing. Even with front wheel drive, you just gotta take it by the scruff of its neck. Full throttle. <laughs> Hey everybody, check it out. That is the new 2024 Chevrolet Trax and it's been one of the biggest surprises of the year because when it was debuted, I thought it was kind of cool, but you know, nothing that special. However, after living with it for a couple of days now, I am unbelievably impressed with this car. I'm going to tell you why. And we're also going to find out, is front wheel drive enough capability because this car only comes in front wheel drive. Obviously the Trax is never intended to be a rock crawler, it's not an off-roader, but it still is marketed as a crossover SUV. It still has roughly seven and a half inches of ground clearance, but no option for all-wheel drive. And they wanna see, is that enough capability to at least get you to like the cool campsite, which is what people use crossovers for. So that's what we're gonna find out. Now we're starting out on this hill, pretty steep little hill, probably 15, 20 degrees here at Tumbleweed Ranch. Just taking it nice and slow as you would. Starting to get a little bit steep, maintaining five miles an hour. Front tires are slipping a little bit, but you can see it's actually pretty good. We were able to get up that hill and um, really not a lot of drama. Now I'm going to try something. What if we were to stop on that hill? So if you were to stop on the 15 degree hill, are we going to see, um, you know, a loss of traction? Are we not going to be able to get up into drive? Oh, look at that. Very interesting. It actually held the brakes quite nicely um, with the, the hill hold feature. A little further down here, maybe into some of the looser dirt. Held the brakes nicely. And as long as I'm not mashing or being too aggressive on the accelerator. Look at that. A little bit of slipping. We made it up. So, so far, even on that fairly aggressive steep hill, front wheel drive has proved to be plenty. So what is the Chevrolet Trax? Well, it is Chevrolet's smallest crossover, a very affordable front wheel drive only vehicle that competes with vehicles like the Hyundai Venue, maybe the Subaru Crosstrek, the Toyota Corolla Cross, um, maybe even like the Hyundai Kona. So it's on the entry level side of the crossover lineup. But the big news on this thing is the value and the price. Now the engine in the Trax is a little bit interesting because it is a 1.2 liter three cylinder. So whereas its competitive set typically uses a four cylinder unit, this is a three cylinder with a turbo, which really helps it up here at elevation. Makes it feel a lot spunkier than its 137 horsepower and 162 pound feet of torque would suggest. It also uses a conventional six speed automatic, not a CVT, not a dual clutch. Now, believe it or not, a six speed automatic is probably a less efficient choice than a CVT or a dual clutch. Um, maybe even arguably a little bit slower than those options because of parasitic losses, but it makes this car a much better thing to drive. So we have this test here at TFL called the slip test, where we get various wheels stuck on purpose in these rollers to see how the well, all wheel drive system works to get the vehicle unstuck and it's a test of traction control and wheel speed sensors and that kind of thing. Now, of course the Trax does not have all wheel drive. It has front wheel drive, but I've always wanted to do a front wheel drive slip test. Basically, we're gonna get one wheel stuck in the rollers, the left front, and then it's gonna have to send wheel speed to the right front. That's gonna have to start spinning if we're gonna get unstuck. So let's see what happens. You know, this is very common in the snow and the slush. One wheel is on a patch of ice. The other one's on the ground and some traction. Let's see what happens. So in the drive, wheel is in the rollers, accelerating out. Oh, there you go. That actually worked really, really well. So uh, started spinning. Then the brake clamped down on that wheel, set wheel speed to the other side and off we went. We'll try it one more time just to make sure it was not a fluke into drive. Nice and settled out of the accelerator. Okay, look at that. So obviously that was pretty good. But what would happen if both front wheels were stuck? Well, because I get that comment a lot and people wanna see um, all the traction wheels stuck in the rollers, we'll try that one just for kicks and giggles. All right, so everyone always asks me when I do these rollers to do all the drive wheels stuck and they expect the car to get unstuck somehow especially like a subaru they're always like put all four wheels then it'll get unstuck well we're going to try that in the tracks both front wheels are stuck i think the results are going to be pretty inevitable but you know this happens a lot in the ice and the snow one set of wheels gets stuck 
yeah, traction control is blinking, but this is a super low friction environment. Foot to the floor, nothing. Uh, you can try backing up. Yeah, nothing. Alex, I need a push. <laughs> Yay. We got unstuck. So all wheel drive is a useful tool as if that needed to be said, but here's the thing. And I want to make this very clear sunglasses coming off. If I was given two identical vehicles, front wheel drive with snow tires, all wheel drive with all seasons, I would take front wheel drive with snow tires a hundred percent of the time, because it's not only about accelerating, it's about stopping and turning. And this is something that I don't often talk about, but I probably should in a snowy environment. I'd rather have good snow tires and front wheel drive than bad tires and all wheel drive because, um, you know, there's a lot of places you can go with front wheel drive and good tires, but uh, certainly in terms of traction, you're, you're limited. The average new car price here in the US is quickly approaching $50,000. It's like in the mid to high $40,000 range, but this brand new tracks well equipped with a bunch of options comes in at $26,540. So under 27 grand and the amount of things you get in this tracks is truly impressive. Now the old tracks was super cheap, but it was also a little bit of a dreary ride. This new one has been completely redesigned with standard LED headlights. These wheels are 18 inches they're finished in black they look pretty good actually and what's surprising is these tires are 225 width which is very wide for this class and if you get the RS spec you get 245s which help this car handle pretty well and then coming around to the rear end this is a pretty attractive car it's kind of low with the long roof and then it's got these wide hips it's got a big trunk as well I just can't believe the value here from an exterior standpoint and wait till you see the inside. Now the interior of this active trim for 26 grand has so many nice features starting with these seats. Now it's not a real leather, but it still is a premium seating surface with a power driver seat and these cool little yellow accents. Rather than a traditional flat black plastic dash, which you'd expect at this price point, you get a textured dash with a silver accenting. And I love these vents. Now this is actually a 3D effect. You can actually feel these little ridges here, kind of a copper finish. Looks very 1950s aeronautic, and you actually control the vent with this little slider. Very, very nice. This active trim has an 11 inch screen here, full touchscreen with the latest and greatest in Chevrolet infotainment compatible with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and of course, it still has a little knob. One thing that I love about this system is you've got these shortcuts on the left side of the screen for audio, for your phone, you've got your little home button here, but I love this one, traction control. Look at that. That was such an important button, they had to leave it on the home screen always. And you actually have three options, traction control and ESC off, or just traction control off. Here in the center of the tracks, we have single zone automatic climate control. You turn this knob to adjust the climate temperature. You can also adjust the fan manually here on the right side, but look at some of the premium features here. Heated seats, three position for both the driver and the passenger. You also get two USB ports, USB-C and USB-A, as well as a wireless charger. Even though this car is on the affordable end of the spectrum, you still get a full digital instrument cluster and they even give you a couple of configurable gauge displays so you've got your normal circle you've got this one which kind of looks like a little baby turbo I think that's pretty cool and then this is the weirdest one gauge 3 is like this pie thing which is very futuristic so here in this active trim we have a full leather wrapped steering wheel with controls for audio and the like but check this out you've got cruise control adaptive cruise control at 26 grand may i point out that andre's truck doesn't even have it <clears throat> at 40 plus grand and look at this heated steering wheel on the tracks headroom is actually very good i'm six feet tall still have just a little bit of room but lots of space back here for my head and then even better is the completely flat floor so uh, one of the advantages of not having all-wheel drive is there's no hump here which a lot of its competitors have instead you've got almost like an ev like floor that's completely flat a couple of things you're missing um no armrest which folds down here that's of course cost cutting no rear vents back here and then um, you do have USB ports, so which is nice. So a USB-C and a USB-A. The Trax has up to 54 cubic feet worth of space when you fold down the second row in the 60-40 split. And what's nice is the seats do fold flat, which is great. Underneath the cargo floor here, you actually get a spare tire, be it a donut, but still a spare is getting rarer and rarer in 2024. And then you've got this kind of crummy little shelf, which is a little cumbersome and doesn't fold up very easily, but at least you do have a view blocker. All right, this is the Onyx Off-Road Andre's Pit Course. Check out Onyx Off-Road 
for all your off-road navigation needs. They do really good work over there. Um, I use them in my daily life, actually, even when I'm not doing this job, just because it is my go-to off-road navigation software. Download offline maps so you never get lost. All right, now, the tracks climbed successfully up that steep ranch hill. I'm really impressed with that, actually, because I just got super stuck on that hill in a two-wheel drive car recently, but that just goes to show that new vehicles with traction control can really um, be beneficial uh, in terms of capability, right? Traction control gets such a bad rap, but it really is the reason that so many vehicles nowadays can go where old vehicles can't, is because they can simulate lockers or get close to simulating lockers without actually needing a locker. We're going through the trenches course here, which are these offset grooves cut into the earth. We test all our all-wheel drive cars through here, and I've never taken a front-wheel drive car through here, so I'm kind of excited to see can the tracks do it? So we're going into our first trench here and we're gonna pick up the right front wheel and the um, uh, left rear wheel as well. And usually we've got the advantage of all wheel drive to help us out here. Oh, look at that. Very good traction control programming so far. Uh, I think this might be where we get a little bit stuck though because it's starting to get steeper. Actually, the little tracks articulated through that. Okay, how about this next part? We like to have some all-wheel drive intervention. Oh, you see, I spoke too soon. Brakes are working at it. Oof, we we're stuck though. Let me try turning traction control off. Let's see if that helps. It almost never does. It usually hurts, actually. Oof, that does not feel good at all. Now, of course, I could just zoom through this at full speed, but that is not the purpose of this test. It's to, to test the capability, and I have to say, I fear, oh, oh, we did it. We got enough wheel spin. I can't believe that actually worked. I had to really stick my foot in that throttle. How about this one? Oh my God, it's climbing. Even with front wheel drive, you just gotta take it by the scruff of its neck. Full throttle. Oh, it did it! <laughs> and that is because, ladies and gentlemen, this car is super lightweight for its class. It actually is um, surprisingly lightweight and not, not very porky. And um, believe it or not, with enough throttle, we got enough wheel speed and enough torque transfer, we made it up. Unreal. Okay, well, next up, uh, I think we're gonna have to try this thing down an off-road, um, actually not off-road course, like a trail. Um, it doesn't have any underbody protection, but that was pretty impressive. For just a little front-wheel drive car, the power of traction control. Well, I gotta say, I had to redo my clothes because I was unbelievably amazed with the little tracks. Now, I've had all-wheel drive vehicles through this course that really have not done much at all, right? Like the some of the <coughs> Honda products, especially the, 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 the CVT-equipped ones, they really struggle with, you know, wheel speed and torque transfer. This little thing, turbocharger, six-speed automatic, plant your foot down on that puppy, and it made it up. Unreal performance out of the little Chevrolet track. So do you need all-wheel drive? At the beginning, I was gonna be like, look, it can't do this. It turns out it did do it, um, and I'm, I'm pretty blown away. Guys, let me know what you think in the comment section. Big thank you to Alex behind the camera, and we'll see you in the next video. What a machine!